This is the Instant Speed Podcast, episode number 55. Our guest today is Thomas Von Freshness, a.k.a. Tommy Fresh of Fresh and Buds, a great, great friend. And uh, it's always a good time to have him on the show. We're going to talk about the Fall Brawl that just occurred in Columbus, Ohio, put on by Realm Gaming Network, and the fun and shenanigans that you guys did not get to see. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be quite an expose. Yeah, nonetheless, this episode is always brought to you by Kayfabe Cards. Oh, yes, Kayfabe Cards is a wonderful, wonderful store. I promise you, you guys want to check them out, go to Kayfabe Cards. That's www.kayfabecards.com. They are a chief sponsor of the Goliath Gauntlet as well. And they are there to just fill your needs when it comes to TCG's magic, Pokemon, but of course, Flesh and Blood. They're going to go ahead and ship it directly to your door. Go check them out, kayfabecards.com. Be who you want to be. And again, let's get to the facts before we get to Tommy Fresh. And the first thing first, hey, Worlds is around the corner and Dynasty is right after that. So lots of cool stuff are going to be happening. I will be at Worlds in San Jose. I'll be casting with some excellent people. I cannot wait to see you all there. Some of the names that are going to be there is it's uh, incredible. Cosplayers galore. You got, you know, uh, Olivia is going to be there. You got other great content creators like the professor of Tellurian Community College excellent human being and just the, the the entire atmosphere is going to be one of celebration james white will be there i promise you i i hear some things that are going to happen and i cannot share them but it is going to be worth watching so that is going down also we did find a winner for the battle hardened in columbus aka the fall brawl put on by realm gaming network that was dan gross close beating noah clark uh, it's Fi versus Dromai. Fi came out on top. A wonderful, wonderful weekend all the way around. Congratulations to you, Dan, for winning the Battle Hardened. You rock. You're awesome. Uh, I also want to show you these playmats. These playmats are for sale. And uh, if you want to get one, there are literally like three left. So uh, the first print edition, the I guess the alpha print of the Instant Speed playmat is available. And once these are sold, we are changing the design. So if you like this design, it is only here for a limited time. Uh, 25 USD. You can message me. I can bring them to Worlds and hook you up. I've already got a bunch of cool, happy uh, customers. Uh, with these mats. Uh, beyond that, friends, well, what else do we have? I want to thank our patrons, as always, and uh, I believe that we are on the cusp of reveal season, of spoiler season for Dynasty. I believe that kicks off on November 1st. You do want to plug into that, but uh, that is still a little ways away. So, friends, what do we have to look forward to? We got to look forward to Tommy Fresh. The dude, he's going to spill the beans on what was quite the weekend in Columbus. The Instant Speed Podcast welcomes Thomas Von Freshness. I'm not even going to give you any preamble. I'm not going to kind of stretch this out and, and give you the whole red carpet treatment, Thomas, because you, you, you don't, not that you don't deserve it. It's just that nothing I can say will give you enough credit uh will sort of pump your tires greater than the current uh sexual psi that you maintain you know what i mean well i mean i wouldn't mind some stretching out after this weekend i'm a little stiff that's for sure <laughs> uh i do appreciate the uh the kind words though my friend uh i'm happy to be here as always uh you know just always a good time to chat with it my boy flake it's always good and we got worlds coming up in just uh, a few days here but ultimately is it a few days no it's more than that what am i a week yeah i this is odd because i've been traveling so many weekends that this is the first weekend where i think i have i have like time to actually settle down but in my mind it's because i am actually traveling i'm flying out on the tuesday so uh like i feel like this weekend and then i'm immediately kind of running out the door but um, this fall brawl that we just had from the Realm Games wrapped up, and I think a lot of us are kind of just catching our breath from that. Um, a, a great time all the way around. <laughs> what were your like initial impressions of the fall brawl? So I was not able to make it to any of the other Realm Games events that they had had, and uh, unfortunately, so I wanted to get out there, but you know, just scheduling is, is tough and. And uh, always apprehensive to go into Ohio. So, uh, but I I was so impressed. First of all, because 
when I got there, we went straight to Beyond the Board, which was a an LGS in Columbus run by some buds over there. And it was well, just, first of all, a great store and such a, a huge showing for the Super Armory that they had there 40 Friday people. night. For, there was, so there was an actual sort of waiting list. And it wasn't a waiting list where people just put their names on and said, uh, called ahead and didn't show up. There was people who showed up. Uh, I think they went like six or seven over the top. So there was a bunch of people mm-hmm. who just were there kind of rolling the dice. Yeah, which was which was awesome. I I, I was one of the, the folks that um, got on the wait list and eventually was able to play. And I believe right after that, there was like one spot, and, but there was two fellas and they were both I'm, I'm blanking on the names. They're actually both from New Jersey that uh, wanted to play. And Jordan Kennedy our friend from Flesh and Pod, he ended up dropping so that they could both play instead. And he promptly went over to Skyline Chili to pick up some of uh, whatever that was to bring back <laughs> to both uh, both me and Alex uh, from LSS, which was which was interesting. I got to try that. Alex uh, from LSS is a whole other uh, a whole other conversation. But also, I want to give a shout out to Logan Peterson who gave a spot up to Mike, to uh, Nick Bolas, as he's now, I think he's dug into that, at Nick Bolas Fab on Twitter, which is a whole other, there's so many whole other stories, but ultimately, yeah, continue on, because like this, this whole event was was pretty awesome, and I also want to say that it, pizza was provided, and uh, a slight dig was made at me regarding Canadian Nationals, because Canadian Nationals had a two slice per person maximum, <laughs> which was very strictly observed and uh, monitored. And uh, everybody had w- was was able to get unlimited pizza. However, I was limited to two pieces because that's what I'm used to. So I I snuck a third. So get get boned. Yeah, well, you know, what are they going to do? You're you're over the border now. They can't really really uh, come come after you. But I, uh, do uh, Americans I would... do gluttony? Is that is that your thing? Are you guys or I, I feel like uh, when it comes to America, like moderation is is your name of the game, right? Like, or am I oh. completely misinformed? <laughs> I think you might be a little bit misinformed, but <laughs> hey, we're actively working on it, I think, as a country. So uh, or at least I hope we are. But uh, <laughs> well, yeah, well, we stopped yeah. the cheats. Look, I got to make a quick uh, another interjection here because Jordan drove me to the airport and on the way back from the hotel he picked me up from the hotel we went back to his place we stopped at sheets but i don't know what sheets is uh he we i soon learned you can get everything at sheets um and i i just mentioned again one of my favorite things about traveling to the states is that apparently 97 percent of your scientific research is into developing new m&ms and you know (laughs) so i was like this is incredible cookies and scream like let's go like i so i picked those up and then you know, just went down the whole rabbit hole of like, this is this is why your country's a tire fire, because all of your best minds are figuring out new things to shove into an M&M. Yeah, we, we, we have all of our best scientists working at M&M Mars in Hackettstown, New Jersey. <laughs> um, it, you know, I, I, I will say I did buy those cookies and screen. They're good. M&Ms as well. They are quite, quite tasty. So, you know, hey, listen, we're, we're getting something done. I don't know if it's anything good, but <laughs> uh, Sheets is interesting. So, you know, Sheets is very much just another flavor of, of Wawa. Um, and, and, you know, Wawa is big here in the pen, like the eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey area. I puked and, in, the, and, in the parking lot of one, yes. Yes, you have. Your and, fault, and, actually. <laughs> well, you know, I would say Mike, a.k.a. Nick Bullis, had a little bit of uh, something to do with that as well. Who I'm glad you bring him up. I got to spend a lot of time with Mike. He he, he was my co-pilot, my Chewbacca, uh, going out to Columbus and, and back. And, uh, we, you know, shout out. Shout out, Mike. He's, he's, he's the best. He's a great dude. And, uh, you know, we chatted the whole time. It was like... A, um, uh, actually, a seven hour bonus app on the Patreon of just me and Mike chatting <laughs> <laughs> about all, all of our issues. But, uh, yeah, so the super armory was awesome. I ended up going to two drop cause we wanted to go to the casino, which was, which was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I ended up being up on the night, you know, won won some money in the blackjack tables. I don't think anybody else was, uh, doing so well, but that first night i was like okay this is pretty cool you know we're just hanging we got to do the super armory let's see how the battle harden actually goes tomorrow because it is 
you know, there's some questions in the air about, well, are they really going to pull this off? And I, I, you know, after being home for two days now, I think they have. And it was it was quite the hit. Yeah, that was a concern that they were kind of floating about. And I know that I've, I've had a lot of private conversations with Keith. Keith, obviously, him and his brother own the Realm Gaming Network, him and his brother Jacob. they're First of all, they're phenomenal people just through and through. This is one thing that um, a lot of people, in retrospect, when they kind of evaluate how the Fall Brawl went, which was a battle hardened, let's be real, a lot of people kind of came away from it thinking, you know what? Good things happen to good people, and I'm glad that they they had the success. And you know, did they did they? I don't say you know like I, I look. I don't know the books and such, and I'm not a, a financial person at all by any means. Uh, you 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 just need to look at the amount of Star Wars crap I own that you know <laughs> that finances are not my forte. But they probably didn't make money off this, um, and that's off the back of the fact that. The speakeasy was sold out from front to back. The like the after party, every ticket was sold. The battle hardened was like a hundred and twenty some odd people. The they were firing off side events like crazy, but their prime concern was we want to put on a good event. We you know we want to support the community, and so you know they're like all right, we're gonna make sure that people have access good food that the 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 prizing was pretty generous and pretty you know widespread that like you know there was I, I don't know how many teams played in the team sealed but the team sealed event was like all right there's like 15 or 20 or 15 to 20 teams but like we're gonna pay the top eight and you're gonna get so you just you know it's like almost the 50 50 in terms of getting more than your money back um so ultimately like everything was was great the event was excellent they they take to heart the concerns and the well-being of the people that were there to the point where it's like, all right, this is the, the battle hardened is secondary. We just want to make sure that everybody here is just enjoying themselves. And I think that they knocked it out of the park. They really did, because I I think a lot of people don't know that it's it's really actually is really hard to make money running a tournament, at least in in the in the IRL, the 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 flesh and blood, as it were. But you know, but it pays dividends in terms of community building and getting people to come back to the store or, or wherever, or people just buying flesh and blood product in general continually. So these large scale, maybe not lo as large scale as like a calling or, or, you know, one of the large, large battle hardens, but this is large scale for a small store. These events are important for the game and its continued health. Right. Because we need that kind of community aspect, this like small town feel to get people to invest money back into the LGSs, because that's really where the success of a game comes from. Right. You got to keep these stores and places that you can play at open. Yeah, absolutely. And part of it is also like I, I've had a, a great conversation with people and and people have sent me messages saying you know we one of the sponsors of this show at kayfabe cards you know everybody has like a place where they'll they'll go get their cards and i always tell people you know go check out like spend them like i would spend more to support places that are run by good people and i've done that and a lot of people message me and say you know what like the way that you talk about let's say realm games or the way that you talk about kayfabe cards the people who run these two places are excellent human beings and when I get messages saying, hey, I spent a little more to support these places, I was like, good, that's so good. And I really do appreciate it. It does go a long way because you can kind of, you can you can save a few bucks and then be forgotten in the fray because your your order gets processed through like, you know, 19 different droids. And by the end mm -hmm. of it, you know, somebody sends you something and who knows what it is. And I'm not saying that that's bad. And some people need to save every penny that they can, obviously. But ultimately, mm -hmm. if it's possible, if you can you know, pay a couple percentage points over what the lowest price is. It's a good thing. And that's why like it, I, I can't reiterate enough how community building pays dividends. And, but it's, it's sort of, it's, it's not a get rich quick scheme by any means because you're, you're still kind of digging your way out of a red hole where, 
I'm sure these events that are put on, like you're not making money, you're not getting rich off this by any means. But what you are doing is you're building a reputation and you're you're having people like, let's say, you know, like Elaine, uh, who drove 14 hours or whatever to be there and and play in an event or just have fun and be around the community. Uh, and you have like a car full of Canadians who, yeah, like the car full of Canadians, they want to go out there because they're confident they're going to win, but they wouldn't have gone if it's like, well, the pricing sucked or the experience was bad or whatnot. Um, so developing that is their prime concern. And I think that they're doing it the right way because they could probably just turn a sick profit off of something and then ruin their reputation and then never go back to it. And let's be real. I, how many times have I been on a podcast or tweeted out and mentioning, you know, $300 sealed pools with no prizing. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. like, like it's yeah. just, and I'm not, and, and that's the thing. And I would never, and that kind of soured me from being, oh, well, I'm never going to go to an event by them because I see what the priorities are. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, they, they, they are just checking off boxes. Uh, when, when you, when you see that. And I, I think another thing that's great about, you know, supporting your LGS, right? So, we have Dynasty coming out here in two weeks. I, I think, think it's two, two. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks. And that first weekend. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that first weekend is the Battle Hard in Philly uh, mm -hmm. run by SCG Con. And I believe Dynasty will be legal for that weekend. Yeah, I believe that, you're correct. Yes. That the Dynasty technically comes out that Friday. So. Where are you going to get your product? I mean, sure, I'm sure some vendors at, at the uh, SCG Con will have some product, but you know, you might want to jump the gun and maybe like Thursday night your your LGS is like, all right, your pre-orders are ready, right? So you want to come support the LGS? It's like, you know, you, you can order from I, I won't shout out any like large scale places. Like, you can order from like Amazon or something like that, but you don't know when that's going to actually come, right? And uh, that sort of convenience kind of balances out the cost there, I think, anyway. Well, I, again, like the convenience absolutely does. And, you know, you can, like I, you say Amazon, and that's not that like Flesh and Blood is relatively, readily available on Amazon. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> but magic, magic was. Like it got on there, and like I've heard horror stories about that. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, support your LGS is kind of like the the – overlying message to take under this because of people like Keith and Jacob who are those LGSs that are doing everything they can to support the community. And uh, the tournament ultimately was uh, such a wonderful thing because Azalea was out there <laughs> just tearing it up, which was phenomenal. And uh, like as the tournament progressed, we were kind of keeping an eye on the Azalea. We're like, wow, there's like a 3-0 or a 4-0 Azalea. Like let's Put slam that on screen. Let's do it. And then, wow, the Azalea's in top eight. And wow, the Azalea won their top eight match. So that was a story in itself. I don't know if you were if if uh, you were watching any of that, but Azalea making it through is this kind of a flash in the pan in your opinion? What do you what's your thought on that? Well, so first of all, I think it's uh, Azalea doing that this well at such a premier event is uh, huge for uh, waifu playmat owners all around the world <laughs> uh and <laughs> but it, I, you know what uh, looking at the list and, and talking to some other azalea players it's very like we're gonna hope we don't run into our bad matchups and it's a very potent deck against what it's good against and i don't it, it's it's one of those decks it feels like almost like kano at pro tour new jersey right it was just prime for a really good run and uh, azalea you know there weren't a lot of other azaleas there might not have been any others there are to three. my knowledge there were there three. three yeah so 33 percent of those azaleas made it to the top eight conversion and, rate baby <laughs> i could do math but you know i don't know if if we see like a, a spike in popularity after after this azalea run Maybe, maybe it is strong enough. I don't know though. I, I I doubt it because I don't know. Like the the issue with it has always been that she is basically like Lexi, but with less less of a pool, right? I mean, mm -hmm. a what are you leaning on in that case? Are you leaning on her specializations like Red and the Ledger? Is like that good enough to sort of 
r- remove you know a hundred cards from her arsenal and like no you've and not only that but like the bow like how do you how do you justify putting away something like voltaire when you can yeah or you you know like why would you ever sort of take that away not to mention her you know her uh lexi's ability of flipping Mm -hmm. over a card is just uh, like inherently better her card pool is better so it i i think that azalea has always had a little bit a jam but when you think about it there's just always been an upgraded version of her available. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it, to me, I think you're right. I think it's just kind of like somebody cornered the market on or found the, the right climate to go out of there. You know, uh, it's yeah. like it's like having a plaid suit in the, in, you know, <laughs> and like there. But there's never been the right occasion to wear it. And then you're like, you know what? I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm going to wear it to this wedding. And you it just works. And you're like, everyone's like, wow, like, where did you get that? <laughs> And then the next weekend, if you would try it again, people are like, you you idiot. You look like a fool. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, it feels um, like that's where it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, it, it is interesting. Like, kind of looking at Azalea, Azalea comes from Arcane, Arcane Rising. So the four heroes from there, Kano, Azalea, Dash, and Viscerai. So I felt very, if you kind of look back, like pre-Crucible when that set came out, those were four heroes that, obviously very limited carpool, but also took a lot to work. Like even looking at Viscerai, Viscerai was not very good until he got like Mavrine Skies and Blood Sheath Skeleta, right? Yeah. And sure, like I think Azalea got remorseless in Crucible, but ever, s- yeah, I mean, ever since then, it hasn't been really anything to really make her better. So like where like, Heroes like Kano and Viscerai get like things like either Wildfire and, and and all these these really potent abilities. And uh Azalea is just kind of in that rut where I maybe because Lexi was so featured in Tales that you know the the focus kind of shifted away. But we'll see. I mean the, the deck can perform. We've seen it. Um, but it's it's probably just it needs the stars to align. Oh, it certainly does kind of need the stars to align, and Dynasty might actually address part of that. Um, there was a lot of discussion ahead of Dynasty where people are like, well, buy your Azalea stuff now, and I don't know how much of that was just wishful thinking, you know? But uh, it's like it's like investing in soy. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> soy, soy, oh no, okay, like, who knows? Like, you might, you just starting, like, tipping that domino. I think what uh, what happens is if one content creator or somebody with a decent following just takes a, a flyer on it and says, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really good, so go out and get your Azalea thing, and everybody just like, oh my god, like, you know, it's like a new cryptocurrency. Everyone's going to go out <laughs> and buy it, and ultimately it might be complete dog water, but you don't know about that until the actual card's come out and dynasty season uh, dynasty reveal season is officially kicking off in a few days so we're very excited about that but uh, we want to get back to a little bit of the periphery of the fall brawl we went to we went to the casino yes we did yes we did (laughs) alex from lss was there Yes, he was. And remarked that this casino, he's like, this casino is bigger than the malls we have in my area. <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is like small potatoes. Like, I can see a door where I'm at. Like, you know, like I know where the exit <laughs> is. So uh, did you have fun at the casino? I know that like the way that it was funny because like I walked away for a second and then Jordan comes back and Logan comes back and each of them are like, yeah, we just we literally just lit $100 on fire. So what are we doing next? It's like, dear Lord. I I I like going to the casino. I, I I think I bet pretty conservatively, but enough to like make some money. I was very lucky to just like play some blackjack. You know, they were all like, "Well, we're gonna throw bones. We're gonna we're gonna do craps and stuff like that." I'm like, I don't even know what any of that means. Just like, <laughs> I I want to count to twenty one, and that's it. And uh, th- that was like a lot of fun. You know, and it is funny that Alex was like, "This is the biggest casino I've ever seen." I was like, "This is the size of." Uh, the cafeteria in my high school. I don't know what you're talking about, you know, uh, but it, it was a good night and uh, relatively low key as opposed to the, the next night, which w- was the speakeasy, which was a little bit less low that, key. I think that was, that was a quite an experience as well. I, I just want to quickly rewind to the casino because uh, I learned a lot there as well. And Jordan, um, Jordan Kennedy of uh, flesh and pod, 
not at all a degenerate gambler in any way. Not like he. <laughs> Jordan bets on when people are going to go to the bathroom. Like that was kind of he at the at the armory, the super armory. I told him before because I was playing chain. I said over under. I have I'm like five soul shackles over under two and a half hits. You want to you want to play some money on this? And he's like, you can see him salivating. He's like, don't don't. <laughs> Don't tempt me, man. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll sell my car right now if I need to. But um, we went there, and, and Jordan ex- was – I don't know how to play craps, and Jordan was explaining because the, the, they wanted to actually, you know, like get a whole bunch and just go roll, you know, roll dice and play craps. I don't know how to play craps. So I said, explain to me how to play craps. But the education wasn't necessarily about the rules. It was more so about how to not get murdered at the table where he's like, here are a list of words you cannot say. Uh, literally it, it was, it was worse. It was worse than like a YouTube algorithm. Like he's like, you can't say, he's like, do not ever in any, any way, shape or form say seven. If you say seven, somebody will actually tombstone you through this table. Like you do not say that. Um, he said, you don't, you don't say 11 cause it sounds too much like seven and you can't say that. So instead of saying 11, you say, yo, I was like, yeah, that absolutely makes sense. That's completely. Yeah. <laughs> Totally makes sense. Absolutely, you say yo. Um, he also mentioned a whole bunch of other stuff. And by the end of it, I was like, I don't even want to do this anymore because I know I'm gonna I'm gonna say something random. Like I'm gonna say like, hey, anyone see Stranger Things? He's like, you can't say Stranger Things because or like if I say Netflix, <laughs> you say Netflix. Stranger Things is on Netflix. One of the characters on Stranger Things is Eleven. Eleven sounds too much like Seven. I'm gonna murder you. I'm slit your throat right here. And it's like, okay, it's too much. Way too much. Yeah, it's a weird game. It really is. And I, I when when I went to the uprising premiere in Vegas, I stayed with Logan. And Logan was was gave me that whole spiel as well. And it kind of just went in and then straight out. I was like <laughs> I was like, all right, yeah, sounds good. And I was like, I'm never gonna play this ever in my life. I'm just like, I just want to I only want to play cards. This is I that's why I play Flesh of Blood. I just want to play cards. And yeah, Bones is crazy. I was watching Alex from LSS just he was having a blast. He was throwing some bones. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it was going well or or not, but it seemed like everybody was having a good time. Oh, he was having a blast. And part of it was because he was uh, tipped off. He's like, somebody was walking around. It's like, hey, you should put $5 in this slot machine. And he rolled and then he won 23 free spins. And that $5 became like $55. Oh, oh he was <laughs> absolutely just in like his thing. Like he was just like, this is amazing. And of course, you go to the casino and you jam five dollars, you get like ten times your eleven times your return. You think everything's amazing, and then he came back like five minutes later after playing craps. He's like, "Oh yeah, I lost it all." I'm like, "Oh, cool." And he put a big smile on his face. But I had a blast. I was like, "That's what matters, Alex, for sure." Easy come, easy go, as they say. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh, it's easy I, I've go. Been there. Big time, yeah. big time. Uh, bonus was this time because again, I think the first time you and I met was at the casino in Philadelphia, and uh, this time. Uh, props to Nick Bolas for not spilling a beer all over the Texas Hold'em table because he did that last time and got kicked out. That was phenomenal. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. He was uh, a. Well, we were all at this casino a little bit uh, more well behaved. I think is the word that I would like to use. Uh, we had some hot dogs and the hot dogs were good. So they were know. good. You and I had the same kind. We had the uh, hot hot slaw dogs. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, it was not bad. You know, some spice and some coleslaw on a hot dog. It was interesting. Yeah, those dogs were definitely, uh, they were aged well, I will say, because I I didn't know that they it closed at midnight because we went there to order them at like 11.45 or something. And then all of a sudden, like once I got my hot dogs, they closed up the whole thing. And I was like, oh, okay. So how long have these hot dogs been just, you know, marinating on that that grill? Uh, it's like the, the scene in Lord of the Rings, uh, almost as old as I am. Um, you know, <laughs> very good year. They uh, tasted like <laughs> Lembus bread. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. so oh good. my God. Um, the speakeasy was the Saturday night aspect of it, which was hilarious mm-hmm. because there was, you did, you ran like eight rounds of Swiss on the, on the, um, on Saturday. And then after that was the speakeasy. So Lord help you. If you went to top eight, because the top eight was the next morning at 9 a.m., and Speakeasy was legitimately, first of all, it was like, you have a VIP bracelet? Cool. Here is a gigantic, like, selection of all kinds of liquor. Go nuts. And they were very happily pouring the fatness mm-hmm. into my glass. And I got a little bit happy, I'll say. 
I, I will say I also got pretty happy. So for context, for me, I was able to at least go back to the hotel and and like kind of shower and come back to the speakeasy. I started the day at the Battle Hardened 3 0 on Levia. No biggie, guys. I'm I'm really doing it. Uh then I lost three in a row. So <laughs> after that I dropped and I was like, all right, gonna go get a shower. I had some beers in my room, you know, just just kind of waiting, waiting out. And then I, I I drove back and the speakeasy starts and and you know, everybody's like the line for the food just got super long right away. It's like, oh, nobody's going to the bar. I'll just go to the bar. Veteran move. You know? And and you know, started talking with the bartenders, and you know, when when you chat them up and you tip them first, they they tend to pour even heavier, uh, and which was in maybe in hindsight a little bit of a mistake because I had to do the alpha draft. I, I, I make it sound like I was a punishment. No, yeah, how like, dare you? <laughs> I, wow, what a burden! I was honored to be part of the alpha draft after winning it uh, through through the contest they had, and but I was. <laughs> I, we, I think we only played one game of the Alpha Draft. I played it against Alex from LSS. And, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good. You know, I, I also pulled a cold foil heart and cross strap, which was very cool. And, you know, I forget that I just basically forgot that R- Razor Reflex was a card in, in the set. And I just lost. And there, there you go. And then he, he's a, he ribbed me on it on Twitter the next day. I was like, I, was, I, I really got you with that Razor Reflex. I'm like, you sure did. What was, also, were, th- were there any huge hits in that box? Heart and cross strap was the uh, the only real hit. So, like, this is the, th- the one thing. I mean, we had we were spoiled by the one that was opened at US Nats, where that was like that box was loaded. It was mm-hmm. it, it was a, an absolute just masterpiece of a box. We heard the celebrations of the heart and cross strap, which was great, but no no legendaries in the box. Obviously, the majestics. Like, was there anything of value in there, or was it just like because? I- <laughs> I, I, I don't remember. I, I remember <laughs> opening the the heart and cross strap, which it, you know is a decent hit. I think it, like the last one sold for like four hundred bucks. You know that was a while ago, but at least on TCG player. But uh, yeah, I don't think there was anything too crazy. There was no like staple. There was no like e strike or anything like that. And um, there were you know a ton of red uh, pink strips of of good cards and stuff. But beyond that, it was nothing too crazy but still very cool experience to open alpha cards yeah this is part of the speakeasy so the speakeasy at uh, for the realm gaming was like so the to get into the alpha draft it was a it was a raffle more or less it's like if you pre or if you bought the playmat you were entered into um the alpha draft and i i think there's like 30 or 40 entries into it which was crazy like that's a lot um and ultimately if you had the vip pass which was like a $250 pass. It was open bar. It was all the food you can eat. And it was all you can draft. All you have to do is literally just go up to the table and say, hey, we got eight. Give us a box of whatever you have. So we drafted um, we drafted Arcane Rising. We drafted uh, all kinds of stuff. We drafted uh, Tails, my favorite set. And we just basically, and that's that was what the Realm did. They just had a stack of boxes. And there was like, yeah, you don't have to re- report results or, you know, request. Just come here and just point and be like, give me that box. And then it was like, <laughs> here you go. And you go sit down and you just open it and have a good time. You could, and it was funny because like, they, were, they weren't they were like, okay, you have to play three games and then you can draft again. It was like, you draft, you don't like your deck. It's like, just it's like throw the cards yeah. in the garbage and go back and be like, all right, <laughs> give us another box. This is terrible. And they were like, yeah, here you go. So it was... Honestly, a really cool experience. And, you know, I don't know. And like we said before, they probably didn't make money on it. But it was still a very great community building experience that involved still playing the game, which is kind of cool. Because initially, when you hear about the the speakeasy, you're like, oh, what are we just going to hang out and drink or whatever? Which is fine. I love that. But the fact that we were like, like, we're all such car game players i think everybody was just immediately sat down and started drafting Ew. which was yeah it was really cool people are like hey cool thanks for the food uh can we just like clear this this garbage out of the way and actually like slam some cards here like that was that was the main part of it and um that eventually led like they kicked us out i think it was like 10 o'clock was it or or something like that and yeah. but it was funny because at 10 o'clock as i'm kind of getting my gear and and you know, heading to the door to figure out where we're going next, which turned out to be a bar, obviously. Uh, yes. I hear in the distance 
somebody sings was it Bruce Springsteen? Yeah. 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 Uh they were they were doing some karaoke and they're like, Oh, Tommy, you gotta come up, do some karaoke. And they they insulted me by putting on John Bon Jovi on it first. I was like, I I'm only doing Bruce. I'm so, so sorry. Isn't he a Jersey boy anyways? He is, but it's like it's like Bruce Springsteen, like Bon Jovi, like down here. And then like Danny DeVito somewhere in the middle. But <laughs> um so I don't know. Then they just kind of put on Born to Run, but it didn't have the lyrics. So and I was I was uh, a couple sheets to the wind and and I was just making Bruce Springsteen noises into a microphone and then, <laughs> and then everybody, <laughs> everybody was uh, saying, oh, we're going to a bar called Memories, which I said, is this a Cats the Musical themed bar? And it wasn't. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so that was uh, yeah, that was uh, the karaoke. The karaoke was very short lived, though, unfortunately. We Ubered there and met up with you. Uh, eventually, uh, we all got in there. The producer of the event uh, had no idea how he got there or how he got home, frankly. Uh, but we all Ubered there, which was awesome. And it was one thing that I've learned whenever I go to the United States or anywhere, frankly, is that no matter what I do or no matter what the scenario is, it has to be a reference that I'm Canadian. Like I got to the bar and the mic was like, hey, um, I, got your, I got your drink. And I said, oh, cool. And he's like, you still on like dark rum and diet? I said, yeah, that sounds good. So he like waves over the bartender and I'm like, hey, how are you doing? She's like, good, thank you. And and Mike's like, he's gonna have a a a, a dark a dark rum and and uh, diet coke because he's Canadian. I'm like, the what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> it's, it's the national drink, my friend. I, or at least it is now. <laughs> apparently, I'm not gonna argue if that's kind of like our, our you know our official national bird but drink i could have just said national <laughs> drink i don't know why i said bird but it's like a bird but drink yeah no that makes sense yeah definitely <laughs> we'll say it makes sense you and i get know what the hell we're talking about and then and then we got kicked out of there because that place closed so mm -hmm. uh, and then we went back to the hotel tommy i just i was i was done and like part of me was like dude if i have one more drink it's like tomorrow's gonna be an absolute slog so i went to my room uh, with, I think, I don't know if Charmer actually came with us or not, or with me or not, but I remember just getting back to my room, keying in there and basically just like stripping down, crawling into bed and setting my alarm for 7am and saying, we'll figure this out tomorrow. Uh, but the mm -hmm. party didn't end there, did it? It did not. So I had, and for context, for people who don't know, I, I work in the, the alcoholic beverage industry. So I had quite a few samples with me. <laughs> Um, in the room. Hold on. When I saw you in the lobby, you had your bag of like of cards and stuff, and then <laughs> you were holding what looked like, you know, like uh, when they used to sell like cigarettes and yo-yos and stuff at the casino, <laughs> like those girls yeah. that are walking around like cigarettes and cigars, and it's like <laughs> you had that, but it was a whole bunch of random beers. Yeah, yeah, it it, it was, and and you know, I I just brought it because. I always, I always know somebody wants to like hang out at the end of the night, and that's what happened. And all I really remember was just hopping in the bed, and there was like ten other people in the room, and there was just like wild conversations going on. Uh, you know, I think, I think we confused Alex. You know, wonderful young innocent man from New Zealand. Uh, he did not know what mid meant. So we had to explain what mid meant. I don't know. What and, it, I don't know what it be like. If someone asked me, like, "Hey, if something's mid, what is it?" I'm like, I don't know if it, if if it's good or if it's bad or if it's like actually in the middle. Like, if it's just kind of okay, like, well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think, and I don't even know if I said this at the time, but you know, it's not good. It's not bad. It's in the middle, but it doesn't quite meet expectations. So okay. I think, yeah, just not good enough. Perfect. But it doesn't matter. We explain that, and and then next thing I know, they all start kind of slowly walking out, and and I I I conk out, wake up the next morning, not feeling my best. But Ethan Van Sant uh, messaged me, "Hey, we still doing the team sealed?" And I said, looked at my clock, and I was like, "Yes, but I'm going to be a little bit late for sure." And we well, made it. That's what matters is you made it. Not everyone did. 
But I also want to rewind a bit here because I think you're skipping over some crucial elements. Number one, when I was discuss when I was describing Alex from LSS, I said this is a dude that strikes me as like when he goes back home, it's board shorts and not giving a single f about anything. <laughs> like I feel like he's just the chillest dude, which he was. Sure. So we're gonna play a little confirm or deny. Uh, I just made this up, but it's confirm or okay. deny. Confirm or deny, Tommy Fresh. Uh, Alex showed up to the room wearing the Weston Hotel bathrobe. Oh my God! He he. There's <sighs> a murky okay, water. I, your... <laughs> I it's very murky for me because uh, I was like laying there, like kind of going in and out, you know, just letting people hang out, have beers. But I, gosh, was he actually? I felt like I saw some chest for sure. I saw some chest, so I cannot confirm. Nor can I deny that. All right. I, yeah. That's the perfect press response, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and and I truly mean it. I, I I don't exactly remember, but he's a very good looking guy. So I did remember seeing some chest. I sure. mean, you definitely took a look. He, he's he's quite a specimen. I'm not going to lie. His hair is just something special. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so confirm or deny, you did at one point literally strip down to your underwear and say i'm going to bed and uh and but didn't tell people to leave oh yeah yeah yeah. i did no i i can't confirm that because i was like i'm getting comfy i'm i'm inebriated and i don't want to force anybody out of the room because everybody seemed to be having a good time and i was like i'm getting into my my you know my undies and and just chilling and uh yeah that is true so confirm or deny then said undies were is a thong. I can deny that. I can deny <laughs> I did not pack them for the weekend. Oh, it's okay. Not this <laughs> that's time. a that's a home only thing. Okay. Um if ever I got as comfortable, I look, all we're, we're friends. It's, this is just between you and I. No one else is ever gonna listen to this, right? <laughs> yeah. I I sleep naked. Somebody once told me that it's it's <laughs> They use the term healthier, and I don't know if that's actually correct, but to me, it's just, yeah, I just want nothing holding me back, you know? Yeah. And no, I uh, get it. If I were as comfortable as you, and you're like, all right, we're like, let's get into bed, I, and, I, and I was drunk, I would have been like, well, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm it would have been. Yeah, this is my room. You're in my domain, so. <laughs> Are you the master of it? I was definitely the master of my domain that weekend. Right, that's good. That's yeah. good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I get the 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 sleeping nude thing. I will say it, it is very liberating. I was not going to do it that night, though. Oh, okay. Uh, I, there was there was just too too much that could have gone wrong. I think. Yeah. You know, with with that cast of characters in there. All right, confirm or deny, Tommy Fresh. Uh, you you there was a complaint uh, filed against your room for noise. Not that I know of, but it's possible. Nobody told me. Uh, all Can right. you tell me? <laughs> well, I'm going off rumor and circa and like sort of just and what is circulating in, uh, through the ether. Uh, confirm or deny, Tommy Fresh? Someone knocked on your door and told you to keep it down. Oh, jeez. I mean, you're asking me. You know, look. I don't even know if I was there at this point <laughs> because. <laughs> There was, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was feeling, I was feeling good. So, and I was just enjoying the the vibes and and everybody having a good time. There may have been some door knocks. I thought that maybe there, I almost feel like there was a, a, a knock at the door at one point and it was, well, we thought it was Charmer. Maybe it wasn't Charmer and that was the complaint. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's just piecing together slowly, right? Incredible. Yeah, we're we're yeah. Re rebuilding your memory banks here. Like Memento. Yeah, exactly. I still haven't <laughs> seen that movie. Never seen oh. Memento. I've never seen Pulp Fiction. Okay. Uh, however, it Pulp Fiction is literally on the shelf right here, and I just refuse to watch it because to me, I'm like, ah, you know what? I'm stronger for not watching it. So don't ask yeah, me why. Why not? I mean, it's it's all right. I mean, it's it's a good movie, but it's like you know, I don't think it's end all be all for all sure. Right. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, I the next day, like you said, the team sealed. Um, I listen. I got up that morning, uh, and. One thing I've learned in my advanced age is that beer is no longer. It, I like it, I love it, but if I have more than one, it like I can have 
40 rum and cokes and wake up the next day functional. Uh, 40 is a stretch, but like, but if I have two or three pints, the next day I am an absolute wreck. My body just can't handle it anymore. So I had a lot to drink, don't get me wrong, but I woke up the next morning, like I was feeling it, had a little bit of a hangover move going on, but jump in the shower, you know, do what you got to do, get to the, the venue, got there on time, everything was good, had something to eat, and at nine or whatever, it's like, hey, lights on, let's do this. Elaine shows up, has the absolute audacity to come into the studio room with her Diana Ross sunglasses on and like request silence. This is where we're broadcasting. It's myself and Charmer and uh, and Brendan Patrick, and we're legitimately there trying to actually inject as much enthusiasm that we are struggling to find because we are not exactly a hundred percent. But we we you fake it till you make it. The coffee sure. eventually came. You know the McBiscuits or whatever the hell like plowed through us and um <laughs> thank you abby for donating the rest of her mcdonald's pancakes to me because i just you know pelican swallowed those in like two seconds <laughs> and i was like let's go but the our room became some sort of refuge because elaine eventually what people don't know is we were we were broadcasting a match and there's that sort of uh that big like i don't know what it's called like that sheet or whatever yeah that, yeah yeah she, she was behind that sleeping. You don't know it. She was literally three feet behind us sleeping. Jordan comes in, but just lays out on the floor in the on the on the, the carpet and just sleeps. Like mm-hmm. everybody was coming in there <laughs> to just kind of recover. Elaine was literally behind the scenes, which is really cool for her, though. I'm sure uh, she wasn't feeling it. No, she was. Well, she was completely out of it because she didn't. She wasn't even coherent afterwards we had to be like okay i had to kind of like get we were because we were in the same hotel and she was on a different floor but like i had to when she gets off on her floor i had to like peek out to make sure she went at least down the right side of the like she made a left and not a right down the corridor Mm -hmm. and just to check on her and whatever i'm like okay she's fine and now we're all good but she was she was a little bit of a mess but we we turned it around the event you know finished well the team sealed you thank god you showed up because you guys did really well yeah, we we uh so I, I show up. I was on a team with Ethan Van Sant, and if if you don't know who he is, he's Man Sant on YouTube, uh, and uh, uh, someone I just met that day, Charles McInnes, and we we had a we we had a pretty good pool. I think the five pool was probably the weakest, and we went like three zero right away. And I think that like guaranteed us for top. Yeah, you're in. Based on, yeah, we were we were guaranteed, and then we kind of like took some two two losses in the other two rounds, and then. In top eight, we're like, all right, well, we made our money back. You know, we'll see how it goes. Win the first round uh, of, of top eight, uh, which I got to remember. That was against Cody Williams, T. Tebow, and uh, Yonji. Uh, I, I, I think it was Yonji. Yonji, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that one, that was a big win for us. And then round two, we played Jordan. Logan and Dagan. So we're like, okay, well, you know, it, another formidable opponent. I actually have a great picture of, of Jordan in the tank, like really thinking about how he's about to lose to Ethan <laughs> and, and Dagan's just looking miserable next to him. It was, it's, it's a great picture. It's going to be in the flesh and blood Smithsonian one day. And we, we won that. And then we get to the finals against Michael Hamilton's team. Now we lost to Michael Hamilton in Swiss. And we we actually had the best matchups for our seats. Like I was on Icelander, I was playing against Phi. Uh, Phi in the middle was playing against Dromai. Michael Hamilton was Icelander, and Ethan was on Dromai. So that was the ideal situation. But we lost the the um, Swiss the Swiss round because I I fumbled and Icelander just like drew it all red hand. You know you can't really do that and. We were like, what if we offer to split because we're kind of tired and we're like, hey, we'll split. Like, and Michael Hamilton wasn't feeling that great. And he's like, and this is, I, I, I adore Michael Hamilton. I I am obsessed with him. He's like the, like, there's something about him that I just love so much. And he's like, he's like, actually, now that we're in the finals, I'm feeling a lot better. (laughs) Yeah, of course you are. For sure you are. 
And he's like, I don't really want to split. And so <laughs> we were like, okay, fine. We'll play it. We'll play it out. I sit down for the finals match. My five opponent, I, I'm blanking on his name right now. He's a great guy and great opponent. He presents his deck. And he, you know, we, we shuffle. He presses his deck. I cut it. And he, and he puts it down. He's like, oh, man. I did not grab my Phoenix Flame. And he asked, I'm like, oh. And he, he asked the, uh, he asked Keith. He's like, can I get it? Because I haven't drawn my cards or because I presented my deck. He's like, Keith's like, you can't get it now. And that's just the rules. I mean, I think we all knew that. And then Michael Hamilton pipes up. He's like, actually, I might be down for splitting now. And, <laughs> which all got a pretty good laugh. And then, I, and then I think I said, I was like, actually, I think we'll play. <laughs> and and uh, I, I, I took the game against Fi, and uh, and then Michael and Ethan had a close one, and Michael beat him out. And you know, I mean, it's Michael it's like, Hamilton on, it's on Michael Icelander. Hamilton. Just, like, just, just another win under on on his belt. So. Why not? Let's yeah. bring it back on Hamilton. Uh, it was fun though. It was it was it was it was nice to kind of get um, a good finish, especially with Ethan. Right, we're, we're, we're the Leviah boys, and and you know, kind of be like, oh, we, maybe we can play the game. But you know, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I was on a team with Mike and uh, Charmer, and the thing about it was that that freaking Noah Clark versus Brody Spurlock match in the quarterfinals took mm -hmm. an hour and forty five minutes. That oh match was God. an hour and forty five minutes. And the whole thing was that we were trying to time it. We're like, yeah, we can, we could, we could play the first round. And things were kind of taking a while to get things organized and registered. We had uh, Mike was on his own, opening the packs, <laughs> registering the cards, building the decks, while Charmer and I were in the booth. And eventually, once that quarterfinal match went like twice as long, it like took two rounds worth of time. We're like, we're not going to do this. And the way that we had basically set it up was it was supposed to be myself and Charmer in the finals. Um, no, sorry, myself. No, it's Charmer. It was supposed to be Charmer and Brendan Patrick in the finals. I said, you guys can do a finals. I usually, I've done, I've done my share of finals. Like, this is something that you guys should experience. It's a good time. Like, you know, get, mm -hmm. get the final thing. Like, by all means, go for it. So I did the first two rounds. And at the end of it, when we realized we're not going to be able to make it, all three of us were on teams. And Brendan Patrick was like, hey, uh, is it cool if I do, if I skip the finals and I, so I could be with my team? And in my head, I was like, Okay, why would we both like I because it could have been him and Charmer and I could have done it could have been Mike and I and like we take a, an auto loss. So we would both have to convert. But then the same thing would have been with Brendan Patrick's team was like, mm -hmm. I think it was uh, Yanji and um, and Michael Fang. And yep. so they would have to win, which I guess is like something they can do. But it's like, give them the best shot. We'll take the L and then we'll just try to run it back, you know. And then finally, when it was all said and done, we wrap up the finals. And you could you, look, I'm guilty of this. But at the end of the match, I was like kind of speed running the end of the show and be like, all right, cool. Thanks for coming. And uh, adios, because like <laughs> literally I can hear them pairing the, the sealed. And oh, yeah. we run out and we finally we run out and like Mike is like, dude, sleeve this up real quick, blah, blah, blah. Like, and I was like looking through the deck. I'm like, OK, making one or two just the quick adjustments and things of like that. I'm like, OK, OK, OK. Like, where do we need to go? And then Mike's like looking at his phone. He's like, OK, OK, OK. Uh, like everybody's sitting down and practically <laughs> like already shuffling up. And he's like, ah, OK, we got to buy. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> After all that, we got to buy. So we sat there for half an hour, like just like I can't believe that this is what happened. And we we ended up uh, we ended up going like started like so we took the L at the beginning, which is hilarious mm -hmm. too because Brendan Patrick's team lost the first round anyways. So, oh wow! Yeah, so it didn't even matter whether he played or not. They took the L in round one anyways. And at the end of the day, we we, we just bubbled out. I think we were like ninth place or something like that. So we won like I think we like we rattled off three wins and lost in the final or something. Anyways, in the final round or something like that. But we didn't quite make it in. But mm -hmm. it was so much fun. It was so oh, much yeah. fun. I, I love that on the on the kind of Sunday for that weekend, right? It's just like Team Seal is already like a great format, kind of kind of removes a lot of the feel bads of sealed in general, and then you, you get to hang out with your your buds and stuff like that too, and mm -hmm. and the 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 feel is a lot better. Um, it, it was pretty awesome. It, it was kind of funny though after you you guys didn't make top eight. Mike calls me because you guys are gonna go get lunch or or dinner or whatever. Yes. Mike calls me. He's like, "Hey, you want to go get lunch?" I'm like, "I'm in the top eight, man." He's like, I didn't even know you were playing. I was like, <laughs> dude, yeah, man, I made it. Well, this is so it, that the story doesn't end there because 
first of all, props to Logan, who, um, no, was it Logan? No, I think it was Jordan. Jordan recommended, yeah, it was Jordan. Jordan recommended a place called Roosters, and it was incredible. First of all, I I got a giant, like, sub, like, fried chicken sub. I got fries and a drink, and it was, like, $12. It was oh, ridiculous. That's amazing. It was nuts. Um, Mike got, like, two pints a big sandwich and a, and a, and like fries and stuff. And it was like $22 or something like that. It was, and the food was delicious, but we went there, but we were waiting because when we called you and Mike's like, Oh, well, they're top eight. Like, we'll just see like how that round goes. And then every time he would text you or call you, he's like, Oh, like they, they won. And like, uh, well, let's wait. And then we wait. And then it's like, dude's in the finals. Let's go eat. Like, screw this. (laughs) (laughs) So we waited a bit and eventually it was myself, uh, Mike charmer and Elaine went to go, get some food and it was really good yeah i'm, I'm sorry i missed it but you know uh, I'll, I'll take the 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 finals run over over food but you know because i i'll get food with you guys another time i think hopefully are you going to worlds no unfortunately not it's a tough san jose is brutal but you're doing battle hard in philly i'm gonna try uh, yeah i think that one's a uh, pretty much a lock at this point yeah i'm kind of like I, it's one of those things where it's not going to take much to tip me over the edge to do it. Flights right now are obscenely expensive, as they mm-hmm. always are. So, if anybody wants to sponsor Flake to go to to Battle Harden, I'll wear your shirt. I'll go naked. Whatever, whatever the caveat is, whatever the the criteria is, I will go. Um, but I, I'm kind of on the fence. Like, if I had a place to stay, uh, I would just I would just eat the I would totally just eat the the cost of travel to just hang around you guys, but. This battle hardened is kind of tucked away behind a magic event. So it's not the same as like the realm gaming one, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like, you know, second fiddle a little bit. But hey, listen, look at look at flights to Newark and tell me if that's uh, a little bit better. Oh, are you able to kind of like scoop me up and like drive? Yeah, I live not far. I live like 45 minutes from Newark. Well, we're going to we're going to investigate this little nonsense. <laughs> totally. Um yeah, dude. I think that that is definitely something. Do you know what the format is of the battle hardened there? CC. And it's the, right the, after Dynasty, Dynasty, too. Yeah. Ooh, which means I got to go pick up my car. I got to go talk to, like, Dave Rude at Harry Tarantula and be like, can you just give me the cards? Like, yeah, a little bit early. Yeah, I don't care about integrity and stuff like that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not my story that might get in trouble, so. Listen, I mean, I'll, I'll scoop you up, but you got to play Rock Reinar. I'll play whatever the hell you want, dude. <laughs> I'll absolutely play whatever, whatever you want. There's so many other stories I want to get to. Um, for instance, the Elaine Pizza Box Cheetos incident uh, i don't know if you know about this but driving driving back from the casino um on that friday was it friday or friday it was friday she made charmer and i sit in the back seat because in the front seat she claimed well there's stuff in the front seat it's like oh, can you not move the stuff what's in the front seat there's a pizza box and some bags of cheetos okay <laughs> these aren't sentient beings, you know, like, I don't think, and like, is the pizza like, are you eating it? No, no, the pizza's empty. Just throw the box away. Just throw, <laughs> throw the box away. Throw it on the interstate. I don't care. I like, I know I'm an, I, I just let, and not only that, it was me sitting in the, in the, so again, total Uber style where there was nobody in the, in the front seat with like, mm-hmm. a, but I was in the back right and Charmer was in the middle because there was all kinds of other crap that was in oh. there that she would refuse to move. So that's for you, Elaine. Uh, there's so many Did Elaine you... stories. I'm not going to even. <laughs> Did you give her five stars? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I gave her, I gave her, uh, I started with five stars and then I deducted one for each bag of Cheetos that was in the front seat. So she, she's <laughs> negative hundred. Stars. Yeah. She ended with negative one star. So sorry. Uh, Tommy, we got one more segment. It's go again. The community wants to hear from you about so many important world shattering topics. Uh, so are you going to stay with us? I sure am. Perfect. All right. We'll be right back with some go again with Tommy Fresh after these words from BCW Supplies. Instant Speed is proudly supported by BCW Supplies. If you need protection for your cards, be it sleeves, deck boxes, storage, organizational tools, or hey, are you a comic book collector, a coin collector? BCW Supplies has your hookup. Use the code ISP10. Get 10% off all of your orders. Go to bcwsupplies.com. BCW, protect, store, display. All right, friends, it's time to go wide with Tommy Fresh. 
Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know what anymore. I mean, like, it, it's... <laughs> we used to have... What's the term? We used to have structure on the show. We used to have all kinds of beautiful and well thought out plans and, and outlines. But when Tommy comes on, I'm just like, I'm going to throw that out the window. Cause I, I would hit the first dot point and then we would just be gone. So it, <laughs> long story short, I've got a bunch of rapid fire questions from the community, Tommy, and you're going to answer them. Are you, you cool with that? I am cool with that. And I am cool in general. I right. think beauty. First one is from T T C C T C G gaming. I think this is T uh, T Tebow Tebow. Um, who dummied me on Icelander. And T, I, I think if there was a chess clock, I think about 37 seconds of the clock would have been me as Dromai, and then probably about 14 and a half minutes was him before I got absolutely just dummy sauced by, uh, by Icelander. Uh, asking, why is ranch the best condiment? Uh, I mean, it's not, uh, you know, okay, so I do want to address something because I think when, you know, I talk a lot about blue cheese dressing and, and and all that everybody's like everybody thinks condiment they think dipping sauce i'm talking about the salad dressing sure i like to dip things i like to dip my my buffalo wings in there but it, it truly shines as a, a dressing too and definitely outshines ranch i i will say since the last time i've been on the show i've had places like i specifically asked for blue cheese on the salad and they give me ranch and it's the most disappointing thing i've ever experienced in my life that's you and, know what that is. That's th akin to being like, is like calling a New Zealander an Australian. I think that that's yeah. kind of. Does that make sense? I think so. I can't really speak for them, but I, I would say it's probably close. Yeah, I, I we'll feel like get that's, James White on the horn. Yeah. Hey, J him. hey, James, is that the same? <laughs> and he'll be like, "You guys are idiots." Uh, <laughs> yeah. Delete tweet. All right. Next one from Greg at Darth Prentice asking, "Which is the superior instrument, a mandolin or a banjo?" Oh, uh, this is a great question from my producer at Fresh and Buds, Mr. Greg, who's just a lovely person. I have to go with a, a banjo because I kind of like the the rhythm aspects of, of, of banjo. And mandolin is really cool, too. But I, I think I, my heart's with banjo all the way. You can't produce something like getaway music with a mandolin. It would seem <laughs> more like you're like I can see like a spaceship being leaving earth and you have like a, a, a nice mandolin style like sadness music as you, everything you've ever known and loved is in your rear view mirror for never to be seen again <laughs> but a banjo is just like an el camino driving through a cactus patch uh you know being chased <laughs> by a bunch of hillbillies so that that's exactly it. you can you can do Led Zeppelin's Battle Evermore with a banjo, but you could never do dueling banjos with a mandolin. That's just oh, of course, yeah. what it is. You can't do dueling anything without the anything, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Let's be real. Dueling harmonicas. Here's your guitar, friend. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. We could try. Uh, Jeffo. Jeffo I met uh, at uh, the Realm Gaming and hooked me up with a Instant Speed Podcast toque. He said, I got a very cool surprise for you. And it is perfect because... The weather's getting chilly here in, in Toronto, and I cannot wait to bust out my Instant Speed podcast toque and go to the store, and someone says, hey, what's that? It looks it looks like something I don't know, and I'll chew their ear off about, about it. I said, yeah, no, this it is looks, for Fresh and Buds it, podcast. I saw it. Uh, uh, it looks a lot like a beanie. Is that what? Well, they call them toques here. I know. <laughs> beanie, get out of here. Uh, question is, uh, for Mr. Fresh, what variety of, is it Trugs? Trogues. Trogues. What, what variety of Trogues is most delicious, and why is your answer Mad Elf 2015? So, and I work for Trogues. It's my day job. It's a, it's a brewery out of Hershey, Pennsylvania, and their most famous beer is their holiday beer called the Mad Elf. It is a 11% dark Belgian beer with cherries and honey, and I don't know if people love it because of the ABV or how it tastes. I enjoy it, but right now I kind of hate it because it just came out. And I'm sick of, I, I had to put a Christmas tree up on a stack of beer at the Total Wine today. And Halloween isn't even here yet. So I'm definitely not going to say Mad Elf 2015, although that was a good vintage. I will say Troganator, which is, which is our German double bock. And I, it just sounds badass. What did, we, what did you feed me when we were in the casino in Philadelphia? Perpetual IPA, which I do love that as well. But, uh, you know, that one, 
that one, if you have a couple, all of a sudden you're, I mean, same with Troganator, but like they're a little bit easier going down. Okay. Unfortunately for you. <laughs> so we've had this discussion many times where we are talking about the community here in flesh and blood and podcasting and how, how we have such good relationships amongst each other. A lot of people with our podcast, it's not about animosity. It's not about competition. It's about camaraderie and we all are rising tide raises all ships or whatever the hell you said last time that made no sense uh ultimately um i am also going to take this this time now to take a uh the biggest swing at uh jordan uh jordan kennedy because i i spent four hours at his place and his christmas tree is up and uh yeah he said admittedly i am a sucker for christmas i love christmas and then i said how long has this been up would you like to take a guess how long his christmas tree has been up Something, something makes me want to say since last year, so. You are quite the astute observer, yes. It was uh, up since Are we last... serious? He loves wow. Christmas. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he All said, right, Jordan. Yeah, he said, dude, he's like, why take it down when it gives me so much joy? Uh, oh, and then and then he <laughs> said all kinds, and then he rattled off names of people he hated. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it has been up a year long, so. You can go there if you want to. I'm sure he would charge like $10 admission. You can go take pictures with it, <laughs> like Santa's Village. <laughs> I mean, I, I do understand that, Jordan. I have uh, I have Easter eggs still hidden from three years ago somewhere. Yeah, those are spoiled. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> those are definitely spoiled. Uh, this one from Capolo, okay, Andrea Biaggi asking, what are the top three dream guests you would like to have on Fresh and Buds uh, that you haven't or couldn't get on yet? Um, well, I think the first and easiest one to say is James White. It'd be an interesting conversation. I would, I would like to try to get an interview with him that I could kind of tune towards my style because obviously we've had like great interviews with him with you and a lot of other creators that have talked to him so far. And I would like the challenge of talking to him in, in, in a way that makes sense for, for what my vibe is. And uh, some other folks, <clears throat> gosh, uh, um, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, I would, I would love to, I would love to chat with Matt Rogers at some point. I, I never had a chance to talk to him. And then I would say, gosh, uh, you, you again, Flake. <laughs> but I've been on it. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll go. Uh, on. Yeah. It, it's hard to say, you know, there's so many great people that I want to talk to and, and, but like in terms of like the, the, the people up at the, the pinnacle of like wh who I want to talk to, like James White, Matt Rogers, and you know, may, maybe, maybe Isaac Crute. Cause I, I don't even know if that guy talks. No, it would literally just be, he would, he would just give you like blinks and sit and hand signals <laughs> and just like next question. He is a scary individual whom I, uh, I love and adore avoid at all costs because he scares me <laughs> I, I was surprised you didn't say something like bruce springsteen like you could have went off the board here i should i could have i you know obviously i would love to talk to them but like what, what am i going to talk to bruce springsteen about on fresh and buds i mean like hey listen did you, did you catch uh battle hard in philly last weekend <laughs> hey bruce how many uh chicks have you boned in your life like <laughs> uh <laughs> i mean it, I, it's that's a high number it has to be so the reason why i say that particular question is because when i was in high school the the school organized an Olympian to come and talk to the to the school. So like there was like <laughs> hundreds of us in the in the auditorium, and they had a, a Q and A. And one of the one of the kids <laughs> went up there to this like gold medal winning speed skater or something, and just goes leans into the mic is like, "How many chicks have you boned in your life?" <laughs> and I was like, everybody in this, I was like, "Oh my god, yeah, that kid got suspended." But. Oh. That's God, what, what a legend, though. Oh, know? hey, we're still talking about it today, right? Yeah. What's that Olympian doing? Probably <laughs> more, more chicks. Uh, but so, <laughs> yeah, he's racking them up. <laughs> um, next question is from Pat Smash Good of the Combat Chain. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, what's it like one eyeing your deck, or what's it like? I'm trying to read this properly. What's it like one eyeing your deck to keep it in front of you? After a night of, ah, oh, I get it, okay. What's it like one-eyeing your deck to keep it in front of you after a night of hard drinking and two hours of bad sleep cuddling with a handful of strangers? So that's, I guess, this question is more so, uh, you know, how I, like, did you see three blood rush bellows at a time uh, at one point? Like, 
I mean, I, I, any game I do see three Blood Rush fellows, I do win. You know, I, to be honest, it's like one of those things where I, I roll up and I uh, have no expectation of anything of myself. And maybe that, you know, calms the nerves enough to just like make the right play. Or, or it's just, it's, it's tough. I will say it's tough, but at least it's something to focus on, right? Because in my many, 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 many hangovers in my life, I, I've always found that focusing on one thing uh, at least makes them somewhat bearable. So Flesh and Blood is a, a fine thing to focus on, even if it's one with one eye. Good answer. Last, uh, another one from Greg. I didn't even notice. He, well, SOB snuck two in. Good for him. Wow. All right. I'll send you a bill. Uh, how does Tommy determine <laughs> ratios for cards in his decks? Is it mostly based on probability and intense spreadsheet work, or is it more of an intuition gut feeling thing? And I, I suppose as somebody who has dug into his um, Leviah as deeply as you have, finding those ratios is important. Obviously, you're like, okay, it's a six. I want it, but there's got to be more to it than that. So this is a great question from Greg, and this is a question I've been asked many times and I've never answered. Um, and the, the reason is I think there are people better equipped to answer it, and I think someone like Hayden Dale Right. He, he, he can answer something like this. And I believe he did answer something like this on Arsenal Pass, a question that came from Coppola, who who asked a few questions back there. But, you know, if I'm going to give an answer, I will say I, I think like very much like a caveman. I think uh, I want one blue per hand, 15 blues. Uh, there we go. That's it. I mean, it, it sounds I was going to say, uh, is cavemanic a word? Cavemanic. <laughs> <laughs> what a cavemanic move. Uh, it, it's interesting because the word manic's in there. So it kind of seems a little bit, you know, off the wall. All right. <laughs> I'll accept. Um, between yourself and Ethan Van Sant, I am pretty high in Leviathan. and I kind of want to try it. But again, eh, there's so much I, I, I honestly want to do. One thing I will not do is try Dory. Sorry, Uber. I know that... Uh, Uber is Mitch Leslie's a very big uh, Dory stand, and every time I get a chance to dig it, it's like. But that's just one hero where I've just never felt the, the urge to sort of dig into it. You know, you'll probably get better results with Dory, but Levia is is very much riding the lightning, right? You're 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 playing powerful cards, but you know it could it could really hurt you. So you know, if if, if you're into that, if you're into like rolling the, if you're into rolling bones, oh, quite yeah. literally. You know, I would, I would, I would do it. Can't we wait to talk. just sit there and absolutely hate my life. And you can ask, you can ask Mike about who the most unlucky player he's ever witnessed play. And again, I'm coming off the back of like five or six years of streaming card games forever. And people are like, oh no, I mean, everyone has bad luck. And then I remember having somebody sit through my stream for like a few hours and be like, dude, I, this is the most pathetic excuse of rng i've ever seen in my life and i'm glad that you're the one having it and not me it was just i'm like yeah this is it he's like well how are you not tilted i'm like because this happens all the time it happens all the time it's a one in four it's an auto lose like let's be real like i just that's how it happens um i mean i still think about your your canadian nats last year when the you posted the picture of the kano player going off and like what turn one or two or something like that. there were like 12 or 13 cards in his pitch zone and this i didn't even have a chance to do anything yet i was like <laughs> Literally, I was like, what the hell do I do? I'm like, <laughs> it's like I sit here and suck on it. Like, that's all it was. I was like, okay. And for the record, I still had a chance to win that game. However, I needed uh, I needed my E-Strike draw card that, like, I snapped it, but I needed the E-Strike draw card to be anything, uh, either a non-attack action or any card with go again. There was basically six duds in the deck, and I hit one of the duds, and I could have won that game, but I didn't. And there so go. goes it. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I wasn't even tilted. I'm like, dude, I took a picture of the board state after that first turn. I was like, this is my souvenir. If I don't win another game, this is good enough. And it, <laughs> and it, and it kind of was. But Tommy, I love you so dearly, and I hope that we can uh, get together for Battle Hard in Philly. We'll have to sort of sort that out. I will honestly take a look. Uh, if you're scooping me from, from Newark, it could just be a scoop me from Newark. We drive straight to Philly and figure it out. Uh, I love sure. you dearly, my friend. And uh, for all those who are desperate for more stories and to find out just what is underneath those clothes, man, is it a thong? Is it nothing? Who knows? Uh, where Where is there more Tommy Fresh? Well, well, I, at this point, I have two two podcasts. So Fresh and Buds, which Flake will be coming on, I think, next month. 
uh, for your like fourth appearance. Is it fourth? Like, I think it's yeah, only like third. Mm, no, I think it's fourth, man. I, I, I don't. don't know I don't. Well, I'll, I'll have to look back. We're gonna have yeah. to look back. But uh, Fresh and Buds, which you can find on all audio platforms, YouTube. Uh, my Twitter is at Fresh Buds Pod. I started a live podcast that comes out weekly, nine thirty Eastern, called the Bud Rush Bellow. I do that with my dear friend Gary, who you might know as the weird viscerai waifu pillow guy on twitter uh aka mr viz and uh that one's uh, a little bit uh wilder and a little bit crazier you know i did the one chip challenge on it like last week and and i completely regret it but you know if people enjoyed it that's okay uh and um yeah yeah the youtube fresh and buds like comment subscribe all that all that fun stuff and and something you can do for both of us actually uh, if if you're listening to this podcast or mine on any kind of audio streaming platform, leave a review. Yes. Give it a little rate. That helps us become a little bit more uh, visible to all the wonderful people out there. That's a very good point. And I don't do, don't do this enough and I don't try to, you know, sort of sell that aspect of it. But it costs you nothing. If you just go and slam a five-star review, that I honestly... Besides listening to the podcast, is probably the best thing you can do for supporting us. Obviously, Patreon, all that stuff is cool, but if you're just really like, how can I, you know, for free support the podcast? Dropping a review and giving it a listen is honestly tell a friend, do all that stuff. But a review goes so far because it's it, we live in a world of ones and zeros, friends, and the algorithm owns us all. So if you just yep. drop that in there, it allows us to be more more sort of legitimized amidst the 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 platforms that uh, you leave the review on so good point tommy i love Absolutely. you buddy i love you this was a great time it was as Again, always no notes ever uh, between us no <laughs> notes uh friends thank you so much for listening to the instant speed podcast thank you to our sponsors that would be kayfabe cards as well as bcw supplies and to our patrons you guys rock sauce so thank you very much don't forget you are not losing if you're learning. Go check out the Goliath Gauntlet. See you at Worlds. I love you all. Peace out.